The topic of um, demoralization, which, which itself is kind of a big word, uh, and I hope you recognize it. somewhere in the middle of that I refer to it as the fuckets, yes. which everybody kind of universally understands, although if you're not a person that curses, you know, maybe you say damn it or you, you, know, you realize you feel crappy or something, but uh, you're let down, you're deflated, there's a lot of synonyms for it. The reason I use the word demoralize is because it relates to morale. And as I was saying, if door and letting addiction slip into their life, I mean, they wouldn't consider it. They, they would stand by the door and hold the door closed. One of the points I make in there, I don't know if I developed it this morning, is that we don't recognize when our morale is chronically low because we're used to it. A kid grows up where there's always fighting in the family, in the household. They, they think that's how it is. They don't realize that that's been costing them in terms of their morale. Our chronic low-level demoralization, which if you think about adolescence, that's, that's almost the definition of adolescence, this period of time where I normally feel like crap, but I'm used to it. Um, and the problem with most teenagers, even if you gave them a magic wand, they wouldn't know what to do with their life to, to create a life that would make you know, life great. <clears throat> they're, a little, they're a little confused about what they ought to be doing. Uh, I don't know if you remember this or not about you. If, if you had a fairly happy childhood, by the time you became a teenager, some part of you was still longing to go back. Like, I wish I was still younger with no responsibilities and more fun. Mm -hmm. If you had a lousy childhood, of course you weren't thinking that way. If you had a lousy childhood and you didn't like adolescence, what were you dreaming of? The day when you'd be on your own. Yeah, the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to be 19 in my own place, in my own car, no curfew. And when that finally happens, how wonderful is it? I want to go back. Yeah, it's not that wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's kind of overrated. So th this leads to the recognition as you come out of your teen years that things may not, in fact, get that much better. All the more reason to turn into an addict. Someday you look back on this and you realize you were a fool. Uh, but that's the problem with wisdom. It lays in the future. You don't actually have it at your disposal. If I gave you the magic wand right now, you would you have certainty about improving a couple things, but you would still be kind of stuck in terms of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Particularly if we said all the changes you make are irreversible. You'd have to be careful using that magic wand, wouldn't you? So the idea is, while we recognize our morale isn't what it should be, we're not really certain about how to improve the game of life or ourselves in the face of that to make it really good. Which in the end might seem to lead to the conclusion it's a matter of luck. But I don't think it's a matter of luck. I think, I think it's a matter of studied self-awareness. I'm 16, I think I know everything. How self-aware really am I? I'm cocky about it, but I'm pretty limited, aren't I? And between the time you were 16 and today, you've really studied yourself thoroughly, haven't you? Yes. No, no. You've studied yourself like a hobby, a little bit here and there. If somebody comes in, they say, well, I've done a lot of reading and stuff. Okay, well, you've studied yourself a little more than the next guy. One of the things I would suggest is you didn't know how to study yourself well. You didn't know where to look to figure yourself out. If I said right now, to somebody describe to me, and take a minute to think about it, the process of self-discovery going well. Where are you looking? What are you looking at? How are you looking? The process of self-discovery going well. How would you... How would you Describe that. This, this is probably the most important research project of your entire existence, learning about who you are. How would you conduct the research? What would you do? Would you look at only what makes you feel good? That's an important piece of information. What makes you feel good? And what makes you feel good is not the same as what makes you feel good. And what makes you feel good today is not the same as 10 years ago. But that's one important piece of information. 
Isn't there more to you than that? On the flip side of that, what makes me feel shitty, what makes me feel bad, you should know about that, right? Because you're going to seek more of what makes you feel good, and you're going to seek to avoid what makes you feel bad, right? Doesn't that make sense? And in the end, all you're really looking at is good and bad feelings. If that's where we stopped, if that's where we you know, limited the research, just those factors. You should know more about yourself and what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad, shouldn't you? The challenge of recovery. We don't have a magic wand. But even at the level of magic wand, what we have is a lot of uncertainty about what we would do with it. We, we need to dig a little deeper into that question. Where would you look to find out more about yourself, the important things about yourself. How would you enhance your self-awareness besides looking at what makes you feel good, what makes you feel bad, and what might be fulfilling if